been doing these all over the state. We think it's important to take this issue outside of Madison, take it to the public, take it to areas where campaigns are actually uh, sometimes very, very nasty and vicious. And certainly Representative Hickson and Senator Robson have, have both been in those types of ca uh, campaigns. Uh, I'll just make a few remarks because we do want to hear from you. But, but the one reason I do this and the one reason that I hope you care about it is that, you know, Wisconsin used to be looked at as the model for clean, accountable, honest government mm -hmm. in the country. Its politics used to be considered honest and honorable. This is a state where we had Senator Bill Proxmire who would spend more money on postage to return campaign contributions than he ever received. This is a state that as recently as 23 years ago, when Tony Earle was the governor of Wisconsin and Tommy Thompson was the minority leader, the two of them combined spent less than $3 million combined on a race for the governorship of Wisconsin. It was a state where ideas mattered much more than money, where Republicans and Democrats could fight like dogs on the floor of the state senate of the assembly, and then afterwards go out and do the business of the people of Wisconsin. What's happened since, unfortunately, that 1986 election has been pretty much all downhill ever since. Uh, governor Thompson, when, when he became governor, realized that, boy, uh, I don't really have to abide by spending li limits because a lot of people want to give me money. So Tommy Thompson decided, instead of abiding by spending limits, to start raising a lot of money for his re-election. The story goes that that inflamed the teachers union, WEAC, who decided, well, in order to answer Tommy Thompson, we're going to start running expenditures on behalf of Democratic candidates, outside expenditures going after Republicans. Well, that inflamed the realtors and Wisconsin Manufacturers and Commerce, who then decided to answer WEAC by setting up these groups called issue-ag groups, where they could evade the law of disclosure and regulation by simply not saying a couple of words like vote for and vote against, but have the same effect of trying to influence the outcome of the election. And we were off to the races. And unfortunately, all of that was exacerbated in the mid and late 90s by the ascension to power of two individuals who really turned Wisconsin into, I think, uh, the cesspool that it, it, that it became politically. That was the Senate Majority Leader uh, and the Speaker of the Assembly at the time, uh, Chuck Walla and Scott Jensen, who decided to make politics a blood sport in this state. And instead of doing anything to try to rein back the money, did everything they could to accelerate it, including acting improperly in the Capitol illegal fundraising, using staff, and all the rest, and we were off to the races. And of course, that culminated in October of 2002 in the greatest scandal uh, in Wisconsin's history where the five top legislative leaders of both political parties were criminally charged with felony misconduct in office, primarily for campaign fundraising. And since that time in 2002, we've had a new governor, we've had many new legislative leaders, what we haven't done is fundamentally cleaned up the Wisconsin political system. And if anything, the money in many cases has gotten worse. It's become greater in amounts. The special interest groups have become louder. And what we need is real campaign finance reform, as everybody has said. Now I have to say that this is a fight we can, we can never stop fighting. Uh, it's a, it is extremely difficult to win, I think largely because we never seem to be able to make these the really gut level connection between how much big big money costs the average citizen and higher taxes and more spending and, and all kinds of other bad things and, and uh, bitter partisanship and, and uh, corruption and, and then ultimately the worst thing probably of all is that the cynicism that comes from all that. People think that everybody in government is perfect, everybody's bad and so on. And it all comes back to the big money. Um, some in the room can remember that when I ran in 74, I ran against an incumbent um, and spent $13,000 uh, to beat an incumbent. Now, I also have to say that the outside groups were not in the races, and it wasn't the big outside money pouring in like today. And my opponent, late, late Senator Swan, didn't spend much more than that himself. Uh, but we've gone from that to now having, with outside money, add up both candidate committees, outside money, we've had a $3 million state senate race. And we had just had about a million dollar assembly race. I was reflecting on 
one of my races uh, early on, I was running against Perry Foltz, and it ran up to $60,000, and that was the highest uh, amount that any assembly race had ever raised, and now we're at a million. Um, so you can just see in just a few short years uh, what has happened. And unfortunately, um, the public gets a little bit cynical. Candidates or very qualified candidates might not want to even run for office because they just think it's just it's going to be insurmountable to be able to raise uh, that much money. And then the public is also concerned that if there is that much money spent, does that influence the, the, uh, the person, the elected uh, official? And how are they setting their priorities as well? And so the institution of democracy is really threatened uh, when we don't have uh, some kind of campaign finance reform and also disclosure. Uh, I raised right around $83,000 and my opponent raised right around $85,000. And so the rest of that million dollars came from these outside interests, of which that uh, we really have no control over and we don't have any conversations with them. So in a sense, our campaigns do get hijacked by those groups. Not only can they be expensive, but <coughs> campaigns can be kind of nasty. I remember, um, you know, if any of you have been around here, they used to, there was a lot of ads on TV that were, I, I thought they were pretty shameful uh, because number one, they were talking about an issue that wasn't really an issue in the race. Uh, there, there, were these, there were these people, you know, holding up signs, you know, saying uh, either, you know, Kim Hickson or John Welty or um, I've forgotten who else. They, I kept waiting for the Chuck Benedict sign to come up, but they, they left me alone, which was kind of nice. But but uh, you know about how you know he's going to be paying for you know health care for immigrants with this healthy Wisconsin bill. Of course, the healthy Wisconsin bill from the last term never came to the assembly. So first of all, it was a it was a bogus issue, um, and it was uh, uh, you know constantly as. Representative Hickson said in advertising, you see it again and again and again. It was on a lot of networks, and um, uh, I, I think it was unfortunate. Um, and these were being put out not by the opposition. This wasn't from from Debbie Towns or or um, you know Brett Davis wasn't running against John Welty. Um, these were issue ads coming out from third party. Uh, people who you can't find out who it is. I mean, it's some group, I think, you know, All Children Matter or something like that, but then they hide behind this cloak of, of some kind of, you know, title that makes it sound like it's, a, you know, a group of interested uh, people. And it's my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think an awful lot of this money was coming in from out of state. These weren't, these weren't uh, local people. I mean, I, you know, personally, I like to, I like to represent Beloit in the 45th district, and, and Kim likes to represent Whitewater, the town of Beloit, and then and the 43rd district, and Judy represents both of those, plus um, the 44th district. So, um, and, and, and we like to, you know, you know, address issues that are important to them. And, and, and we're kind of, you know, uh, not, we, again, these issue ads come up and, and, and they're, they're from uh, uh, special interests that uh, um, I don't think have the, the best interests of, of, the, of the region, of the, of the district, um, in, in, their, uh, in their hearts. Um,